Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to my channel. I'm sorry I haven't been uh, posting videos recently. I've been a little bit busy with work um, and staying at home in self-isolation and um, some other stuff that I will talk about uh, in just a few minutes. Um, I hope you are all staying safe and healthy at home and uh, doing your best to try and flatten the curve and reduce the spread of the coronavirus. Um, in this time of social distancing and self-isolation, I thought uh, I should put a video um, talking about the things I've been doing um, so that you know what I'm up to and that I haven't disappeared from this channel. Um, I'm actually working on some sewing projects. Um, I've been working with a group of other uh, seamstresses. Um, I'm not a seamstress, I'm just a hobby sewer. Uh, but um, we've been working together to create homemade, handmade uh, cloth or fabric masks for um, the health healthcare workers in Atlanta. Um, the, we are also making masks for hospice workers, um, nurses, doctors, um, old age or like senior homes, um, anyone at risk, um, you know, like children or older people uh, who have requested for masks. Um, we're trying to make uh, a million masks to send out. It's not just me, it's like a, a group of people from all over America. Uh, have started sewing masks using supplies they have on hand. I leave the links down below in the description box um, so that you can find some more resources about making masks, the best tutorials to um, you know make masks, the different types of masks uh, people are working on. Um, I am working on a very simple mask which is just two layers of uh, cotton fabric. 100% um, cotton so that it's easily washable and uh, can be reused. Uh, it can be sanitized in high heat of like the laundry machines. Um, so that should be safe for workers to use on top of their uh, protective masks. Um, so this is not a substitute for the N95 masks or uh, these masks are not going to protect you from the coronavirus but they kind of extend the life of the N95 masks, masks or the surgical masks that um, healthcare uh, professionals and other workers need um, as they go about their jobs. These are like, um, you know, essential service workers um, and professionals who are out and about even though we are safe at home. So I'm trying to do my bit to make sure that um, they are as safe as they could be. Um, this is not a, like a substitute for a good quality mask, but it's still an additional layer of protection. And um, I hope it will be useful for people who need it the most until their supplies, uh, you know, catch up and the regular supply chain, uh, you know, comes through. Um, so let me know if you want to see more videos about this. Um, I will be adding some pictures and uh, maybe some video clips about my sewing process and what I'm going uh, or what I'm doing right now. Um, this weekend I have about um, 36 masks to sew. I don't know if I'll be able to finish all of them. Um, I'm not a very good uh, seamstress. I, I have learned sewing on my own and I've been sewing for about 17 years but that is no indication of my skill because I very rarely sew things um, other than you know like things like this table runner <laughs> that I did for myself and um, you know nobody cares if the seams are not straight or I don't care so <laughs> um, that's not an indication of my uh, you know sewing skill. I'm still learning, uh, trying to improve my efficiency and trying to produce as many completed masks as possible. I already had, um, you know, 14 masks go out 
um, a volunteer from our group um, came and picked them up from my apartment. We tried to seal them in Ziploc bags and, um, you know, as less uh, interhuman contact as possible. So we handed it over in a Ziploc bag and put the bag itself into another plastic grocery bag. Um, which they can either discard or throw, I mean, do whatever. Um, and once these masks are, c are picked up, um, they actually deliver them to the hospitals or the hospices or, um, you know, like the primary care doctor clinics, um, anywhere that they need and they will sanitize them before use. So that's a good point. Um, I will... Uh, just show the basic process that I follow and uh, how the masks go from uh, you know homes of people like me to the actual healthcare professionals or the people who need them the most um, so let's get started with that I'm just working on folding and creasing the fabric for the ties of the mask. Um, this is about 2 inches wide and it's about um, 34 inches in length so that the nurses or doctors, whoever, can have about um, 17 inches for each of the ties. Um, so I'm just going to fold it in half, crease it then fold it inwards again and crease it. So this is like making bias tape, but this is uh, this fabric has not been cut on the bias. Um, the masks don't need like uh, don't need the ties to be stretchy because they're quite long. And um, anyway, this method uh, saves a lot of time and helps me crank out masks faster. So I've been uh, folding away. Uh, I could iron them, but um, I find this way keeps the creases there on for longer. And once I do this, my husband actually helps me, uh, f you know, iron everything once uh, it's uh, creased. So <laughs> this is the stack of uh, ties I've been working on. I've just been folding them in half first and then trying to get through and uh, doubling them down later so i'm gonna keep folding now um i'm just continuing with the creasing uh, but i thought i should uh, you know maybe chat with you for a bit um if you like these kind of uh, chatting chatty type vlogs or videos do let me know in the comments um and i can post more of these because as you probably can tell, I love talk. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's a blessing and a curse. <laughs> so what is everyone doing in your part of the world? Um, how are you dealing with this um, coronavirus situation? Are you guys on lockdown or not? Um, uh, to, for, to talk about me, um, Atlanta is on a shelter in place rule right now uh, from Monday, um, which is I think the 23rd, 24th. I'm losing track of like days and time and yeah, the 23rd, I checked. So <laughs> um, 23rd um, night, I think this um, shelter in place order came out so uh, we've been at home i stepped out just once um to collect some fabric from a curbside pickup 
at uh, Joann's Fabrics in Alpharetta. Um, I needed the fabric to make these. Um, I have, I mean, because I sew once in a while, I do have some cotton fabric, but nothing as long or as <laughs> wide as I need. Um, my goal is to make at least 50 masks. Um, I have made only 14 so far. Um, the remaining are in various uh, stages of completion. I'll show you those. Um, what are you doing to deal with this? Are you working on any crafts? Um, I wanted to start um, learning how to do watercolors and I actually subscribed to a watercolor subscription box called the Let's Make Art uh, Watercolor subscri Subscription Box. Um, I can speak more about that uh, in another video. Um, I haven't received it yet. Um, there are a lot of shipping delays and stuff because of this coronavirus. Um, so, uh, I mean, I'm not complaining. Uh, I, I don't mind uh, receiving it later because I'm working on this anyway. I thought I ordered the subscription box before uh, <laughs> this thing became such a pandemic and... Uh, you know, I didn't know that we would be going on lockdown. I just wanted something to do, something productive um, and, um, you know, a way to improve myself or learn new skills. Um, I do paint with a little bit of acrylic paints and stuff like that, but nothing professional <laughs> or, uh, you know, artist level. Just, just some stuff for myself. Um, you can see, like, let me find the camera angle. That's like one of my first paintings. It's uh, a watercolor koi fish. Um, my husband and I did, um, you know, the same painting. Both of us like a, you know, paint competition. <laughs> um, so, and then we had our friends vote um, to which painting they liked the best. And I won by a narrow margin, but <laughs> I won. Um, no prizes. <laughs> just just something to do and uh, all my friends are bored and everybody's stuck at home um nobody can go out so it, it was something fun to do on a weekend um that's bef before i got into this mask making thing i just happened to see a post on facebook um somebody was asking for people who know how to sew to you know step up and try to help um uh, why am I doing this? I'm doing this because my mom was, um, you know, my mom passed away in 2017 and she's a profound influence on me. And um, she was a, a professor of English at a college in India, um, the Women's Christian College. Um, that's where I studied. And um, she's always been, a, she was always a very generous person. She was always very giving and uh, she donated to the needy and um, she followed the christian principle of not letting anyone know <laughs> how much she was donating or uh, when she was donating most of us in the family never knew and uh, we found out much later after she passed away that um, she had helped a lot of people financially um you know and um, you know with uh, like material uh, things like saris and clothes and stuff like that so she has a profound influence on me and um, I've always wanted to do something um, for other people and try to be of service um, in the way my mother was um, I'll never reach that level but I wanted to try um, so I decided I know how to sew I'm not good at sewing, but I'm going to try helping. Um, they are not looking for beautiful masks. Um, they and I'm certainly not selling this. I'm not getting any money out of it. Um, I paid for my own materials, and I'm uh, you know I didn't get any donations of fabric or anything like that. So uh, this is completely self-sponsored, uh, fueled by coffee. <laughs> um, so that's how I decided I should you know try to do as much as I can um, and having something to do helps me be less anxious and be more productive um, during this time of self-isolation 
um i work from home and as you all know from my channel title i am a homebody um staying at home does not bother me or you know like inconvenience me or make me upset or anything like that i i don't know if i'm anti social um i just like staying at home i love my home and um i like to entertain myself so i don't need to go out or whatever i do miss going to the gym because i was trying to be serious about my health this year and try to lose some weight and uh, you know eat healthier and all that which has completely gone out of the window because i'm eating a lot of carbs because carbs are the only things like rice and wheat that you know stay for some time in the pantry and you don't need to go out and buy a fresh batch like you know compared to eggs or milk or <laughs> vegetables um and some of the grocery stores in atlanta were like completely cleaned out um, of produce um whole foods was like a ghost town <laughs> so my husband and i just grabbed whatever we could find um you know like two weeks ago um we haven't been out much after that too buy new groceries so we're trying to eat um dal lentils you know garbanzo beans chickpeas um you know making some tofu curry with whatever we have in the fridge eating a lot of rice <laughs> and roti and chapatis um and things like that you know already busted through our stash of maggi noodles if you like ramen noodles and you've never eaten the indian ramen noodles you should try um there is this brand called maggi and then there's another uh, brand called top ramen they are um, my favorites so if you like spicy ramen noodles you will not be disappointed it's a different taste but if you like curry and if you like ramen you will enjoy this <laughs> so uh, we already busted through a stash of that um, because both of us are working and i started doing this also in the sp in my spare time so no time to cook <laughs> um but hopefully i'll be back to eating healthier meals once grocery stores are back uh, in the regular um stocking schedules and uh, we can find food and you know try to eat healthier at that time i haven't exercised at all so <laughs> i need to get onto that again mm, so one strip fold i've been doing it really slowly because i'm more uh, you know focused on chatting with you right now but um, i'm going to turn the camera off now and finish the rest of the pile so i spent saturday just pinning the straps the ties onto the masks i have about 37 ready to sew um I just ordered these clips on Amazon and they were delivered yesterday. So that's been a huge um, productivity improvement in my process. I had very few pins on hand and I was trying to pin one batch, sew them, then pin the next batch and then, you know, use the pins for the third batch. Um, so it was really difficult but i've got about 100 of these pins so so far i have pinned some of them i have about 13 left to pin but i'm going to concentrate on um, um, first just sewing a line down this side and securing the tie to the mask and then i will go in and finish the entire uh, length of the tie and also fold this in so I'll just do that and I'll be right back. Another thing that helps speed up the production of those masks are to um, wind the bobbins before I start. So I'm just gonna be winding two and hopefully that will <laughs> last me the entirety of this batch. Um, I've ordered more thread on Amazon. I don't know when they'll deliver it because everything is so slow and I wouldn't want to take um, away their time from you know delivering uh, like emergency supplies so I didn't put it on an urgent basis I have not used the you know the fastest option 
I'm just trying to wait till uh, it gets delivered and hopefully maybe in the next two weeks it should. Um, the quilting clips I had ordered thinking they would take um, you know time and they would come only next week but they were uh, uh, you know delivered uh, way ahead of time on Saturday so that's really good and I hope this will be um, you know a good thing. So I'll catch you once I finish sewing those ties on. So this is the set of completed masks that I just finished. Um, these are about 13 masks and there's um, six of that print and another six of this and just one of that. That's from my fabric stash um, with the blue ties are done. Now I need to move on to this batch which is um, some in, of the lemon print and the watermelon print with the green ties. I just finished sewing the mask um, sides. That is, I attached the ties to the mask so it's easy to sew. I don't need to worry about pinning it and, you know, having the a ties twist or move off away from the face mask portion and um, this also gives it a cleaner neater finish it looks more professional and uh, the pleats are more secure so i'm sure it will stand up to the rigorous washing that most hospitals use they wash it in hot water is what i believe um, so this should be sturdy enough to withstand that i have 24 of these 24 25 of these left to um, sew the, the ties and then I'll be done I can mark these up for pickup my uh, group of volunteers have dedicated drivers who come and pick them up um, so I'll be marking it off in the group that these will be ready for pickup and then I can get started with the next batch Thank you all for watching. Um, I'm doing this video to spread awareness and uh, to give you an idea of the things you could do to help out. Uh, even if you don't sew, you could help by donating fabric. You don't need to go anywhere. You can just buy fabric online and have them delivered to you know uh, the houses of people who sew. Uh, I don't need the donation. I'm just saying that you could find these groups on Facebook or um, I think a million masks a day uh, website. I try to find the links and leave them in the description box below. So you can sign up to volunteer for either uh, donations monetarily. If you have a lot of 100% cotton fabric or uh, fabric that people can use to sew, um, you can donate that. Uh, you can donate your uh, time by picking these up and uh, delivering them to people in need. Um, you can also help by, you know, uh, spending time coordinating the admin parts of, you know, this whole operation, setting up Facebook groups for your, your individual town or city, um, if you find a need for masks in that area. Uh, I know that a lot of hospitals do not accept these masks, but for the smaller clinics or um, senior homes or you know, individuals at home who have um, low immunity or are immune compromised uh, with existing medical conditions, these are really useful to have and uh, they are welcoming it with open arms. So that's really great to see. Um, I'm a very slow, um, you know, producer of masks. I, I have a full-time job, as you know, so I sew only at night after work. So basically it's like from 6 p.m. to 1 p.m. at night, um, 1 a.m. at night. Um, so, you know, sometimes I have to rip my stitches and redo them so, <laughs> because I've been sleepy. I feel sleepy while sewing that line and so it's like all wonky. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you do what you can. Um, thank you all for watching this video and I hope you will uh, support, um, you know, the essential services workers and professionals in any way that you can um, even if you're not able to contribute with materials or money or time because you yourself are immune compromised um, just think about these people and uh, try to appreciate their work 
um, try to post on social media thanking them or um, you know letting contacts um, that you know personally if you know a nurse or a doctor or uh, you know the police or uh, whoever you know maybe who is an essential service worker uh, thank them for their service and uh, let them know that you appreciate whatever they have been doing in this really critical time uh, we are all in this together and uh, i'm always available if you are anxious or you want to talk i'm not a healthcare professional i'm not a mental health professional but um, i just wanted to put it out there that i am uh, i'm willing to listen and uh, give you uh, as much support as i can virtually and uh, we can do this together and stay healthy at home i'll see you in my next video until then bye